Thanks for calling. Bad the free popcorn. Bad free popcorn. Sixty seconds. There's a bunch of wimps over there. Roll. We need names. Uh huh. Me 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 me. All right, you mental wannabes. Let's see how you score on this first IQ question. How many people are playing the game? Ah, you have no friends today. What a sad and pathetic life you must lead. Don't worry, I'll be your pal. Go ahead and type in your name. You're just happy to see me, huh? Know what I'm saying? Okay, you want a seven-question game or one of those 21 thingies? Wipes, please. Thank you. I think 30 not. seconds. Okay, your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. That's B as in as in the letter B on your keyboard. And then they built the pyramid. Who are you? I mean, well, you know, I don't doubt that she's that old. I do, however, doubt. 20 that. seconds. Okay. Uh, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices, or you're gonna lose cash. Okay? Okay. 10 seconds. Good luck. Nine. Okay. Eight, lose the seven, desktop. Six, and five, go to black. Mama's Four, pride. Fresh, three, fresh. Stand by. Baby yourself with Mama's pride. Jack movies. Just so you know, we are out of raisinets. But the good news is, we have plenty of goobers. Hey, all by yourself today? Okay, let's see if you can fill up that seat next to you with some cash. Let's rock. Okay, I need a category. For the enjoyment of everyone during question one, please, no unnecessary talking. Shh. Well, what do we have here? What a long, strange Pit it's been. Thousand bucks if you get it. Hey, imagine this sci-fi scenario involving dreamy leading man Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's character from Sleepers is cryogenically frozen and awakens 200 years later in the Woody Allen film Sleeper. Where could he go to get some action? Grammy Hall's house, Dr. Bernardo's sex research clinic, an orgasmatron, or Long Island. In Sleeper, when someone wants some action, they enter a machine called an orgasmatron. Actually, I don't know if Brad Pitt would ever be desperate enough to resort to that. I, on the other hand, might be open to it. Category, please. Cut the red wire! Watch out, it's gonna blow! That was close. Too close. All right, here's the deal. Dingoes ate my Wapner. Two Gs if you get this one right. Hey, it's time to go diving through the dumpster of a fictional character. Let's see, I've got some casino chips, 246 toothpicks, a copy of TV Guide with the people's court circled, and a brochure from Qantas Airlines. Whose garbage is this? Raymond Babbitt, James Bond, Don Corleone, or Sam Spade? Raymond Rain Man Babbitt calculates odds, counts like a madman, loves the people's court, and will only fly Qantas. He can also calculate how many millions he'll make off the movie's marketing and profit percentages. All right, hit me. A question so real you can almost touch it. <laughs> Filmed in spectacular 3D. <laughs> I proudly present Harrison Ford under the big top. And you pop a right answer, you got 2,000 bucks. Hey, remember how Harrison Ford shaved his beard in The Fugitive to evade the cops? Now, come on, was that the best disguise he could come up with? If Dr. Richard Kimball used the same disguise in The Fugitive that Jimmy Stewart used to evade police in The Greatest Show on Earth, what would the good doctor be wearing? A tight-fitting sparkly yellow unitard, a red tuxedo with tails and a top hat, the head of a horse costume, or floppy shoes, white face, and a fluorescent wig. In order to evade the law, Jimmy Stewart disguises himself as Buttons the Clown, so Harrison Ford would be wandering Chicago in floppy shoes, white face, and a fright wig. People, we have a fugitive. He's wearing big red shoes and a polka dot bodysuit. There he is! Okay, pick a category. Shark! 
This one's called America's Funniest. How does $2,000 sound? Okay, here's the deal. I want you to take a good look at this picture and tell me. Besides The Greatest Show on Earth, from which movie could this picture have been taken? Quick change, Killer Clowns from Outer Space shakes the clown or Big Top Pee Wee? Oh, that's ugly. Let's take a look at the right answer. Bill Murray is a bank robbing clown in quick change. A bank robbing clown. Hmm. Charles Keating? I need a category. He's so prime. All the time. Five. The selection is theme restaurants we hate. And we got 3,000 bucks in the pot. Fire up those frontal lobes. Here's the question. Say you're at the Literal Film Title Cafe. You've had some tasty fried green tomatoes and ask for seconds. If the waiter thinks you're referring to the movie seconds, what will happen? You'll get plastic surgery and a new life. You'll assist Jim Belushi in a duel. You'll get a buttload of silver medals. Or you'll have to sprint in slow motion. In the movie Seconds, a depressed guy gets Rock Hudson's face and therefore a new life. Hey man, if it's Rock Hudson, I don't want Seconds. I want all you can eat. Category, please. Password. Yeah, tell him Six sent me. The category, Axel Edward. $3,000 for this one. Strap on your helmet, we're going in. If the actor who was originally supposed to play Eddie Murphy's role in Beverly Hills Cop had actually been hired for all of Eddie's roles, what film might we have seen? Gina Davis and the Golden Child, Nipsey Russell, Delirious, Chevy Chase in Trading Places, or Sylvester Stallone Raw? It's hard to imagine, but it's true. Sylvester was supposed to be the original Beverly Hills cop. And by the way, we've already got Sylvester Stallone raw. It's called The Specialist. All right, hit me. Seven is the number that I'm suggesting. He's suggesting seven. He's suggesting seven. Let's see what we got going. A fire breather and a great set of pipes. This one can net you a grand. Hey, you remember that musical Pete's Dragon? Well, I don't think it has enough songs in it. Based on the movie's lead actress, what would be the most appropriate duet for Elliot the Dragon to sing with her? Anne Murray's Snow Dragon, Helen Reddy's I Am Dragon, Hear Me Roar, Barbara Streisand's Hello Dragon, or Cher's Dragon's Tramps and Thieves? Hello, dragon. Goodbye, dollars. <laughs> Looks like it's not a brazzle-dazzle day for you. The lead actress in Pete's Dragon is Helen Reddy. You gotta be careful doing a duet with a dragon. It's a good way to lose your eyebrows. <laughs> okay, I need a category. Uh-oh, French Cutlet's prime chore. It's time for a ticklish test come. Your gibberish category for today is Dad Golfs with a Frozen Panda. I'm going to open the value of this gibberish question at 5,000 bucks. Now, don't get nervous, but the more time you take, the less cash you get. Okay, tell me what food this phrase rhymes with. Father leans panda ice key on tea. First clue, it's from Silence of the Lambs. Start typing your answer, then hit return. I don't know. The whole thing sounds really gross. I mean, that Chianti is way too dry. I'd go with a nice blush. Okay, pick a category. This category is known as toast, juice, coffee, and cereal. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Listen up, partners. We all remember Wilfred Brimley appearing in those Quaker Oats commercials, right? Well, 
Suppose Wilfred Brimley is hungry, but there are no Quaker Oats to be found. If he is forced to eat an odor, which of these films is a potential meal? The Time Machine, The Lone Ranger, The Poseidon Adventure, or Heidi? The Lone Ranger is a western, also known throughout the industry as an odor because of all the horses. Make sure you have a good hot breakfast of Lone Ranger with a big serving of silver. It's the right thing to do. I need a category. Go! <gasps> Chew on this. An American werewolf in commercials. And we're talking 2000 for this baby. Let's see how you handle this one. If David Naughton star of an American werewolf in London had incorporated into the film the advertising slogan which he was associated with at the time, what might he have said? Where's the slaughtered beef? Wouldn't you like to be a werewolf too? Hey, you sunk your teeth into my hip! Or, hey, let go my leg! Oh! You're number one! Well, on a scale of one to ten. It would have been so beautiful if you'd only picked this. David Naughton was the star of the Dr. Pepper ad campaign back in the late 70s. I think Dr. Pepper dropped him once the rumors started that drinking their product made you wake up naked in zoos. The thought makes me want to go pick up a case. Okay, we're halfway home. Let's see how round two treats you. Now remember, everything in round two is worth double, so heads up. Category, please. Here we have, a good man is hard to find, but John Goodman isn't. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Okay, it's time for a fill in the blank question, so when you dare to presume you have the right answer, buzz in and start typing. Single white male misses Vegas nightlife. This big man with a big heart is searching for a single female to fill the empty rooms of my castle. I'll treat you like a queen. Which John Goodman character plays this at? This could be it. Type in your answer and hit return. In King Ralph, John Goodman plays a Vegas lounge singer who, through a bizarre set of circumstances, becomes the King of England. I heard this movie was inspired by the little-known fact that Tom Jones is actually the Emperor of Uzbekistan. Okay, pick a category. The category is, I said Chisholm Trail. Hello, we're talking six grand, so pay attention. You had a nickname when you were younger, didn't you? I mean, the one everybody said to your face, right? Which movie title could have been used on the set of How the West Was Won as a nickname for the film's directors? The Two Jakes, The Three Musketeers, The Five Heartbeats, or Ten Little Indians? The Two Jakes? You're both wrong. Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. John Ford, Henry Hathaway, and George Marshall each directed a segment of How the West Was Won, so collectively they'd be known as the Three Musketeers. I bet the West wouldn't have been won so quickly if the Cowboys had to wear tights and fight with epees. Okay, I need a category. <laughs> Thirteen. Okay, give it up for a light breakfast. 6,000 big ones for a right answer. Whoa, must be tough. Grease yourself up and get ready to wrestle. Which of these would not be part of a wholesome meal consisting of toast, juice, milk, and equipment found on a movie set? Macaroni, peppers, apples, or pancakes? Peppers are a type of studio light known as Fresnels. That's why you hear actors complaining that it gets so hot under those lights. Next time, use your noodle. <laughs> There's no equipment called macaroni on a movie set. Unless, of course, we're talking about the set of a spaghetti western. Hello! Alright, hit me.
coming at you. How much silk would a best actress chuck? And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Put it in gear, because here we go. If the Academy Awards ceremony moved from Hollywood to the setting of the film Silkwood, what would the celebrity audience probably wear to the event? Erotic lingerie, radiation suits, strategically placed leaves and branches, or scuba gear? Silkwood is about a woman who tries to uncover the safety hazards at a nuclear power plant, so radiation suits would be in order. Ah yes, the glitz, the glamour, the radioactive glow. Okay, pick a category. Let's give a nice warm welcome to It's in the Stars. 6,000 bucks on the table, better make it good. Wow, look at this old horoscope from 1957. Aquarius, a future marriage is in the picture. There have been other women, but she's the first lady. Which Ronald Reagan film would this horoscope best describe? Hellcats of the Navy, Bedtime for Bonzo, Newt Rockney All-American, or Cattle Queen of Montana? Bedtime for Bonzo? No, unfortunately, Ronnie didn't fall in love with all his co-stars. <laughs> for the curious, here's the right answer. Hellcats of the Navy is the one film that starred both Ronald Reagan and his future wife and first lady, Nancy Davis. In real life, the future Mrs. Nancy Reagan also dabbled in astrology. Uh, apparently, the magic eight ball just wasn't giving her the answer she needed. I need a category. Hey, all right, guess what you just picked? It's time to play Dis or Dat. The category for this Dis or Dat is, if Ted Turner had his way, I'm gonna read off seven film titles, and for each one I want you to tell me, is the original film in black and white, color, or both? As they come up, if the original film is a black and white, press 1. If the original film is color, press 2. If it's both, press 3. And press 4 if you want to skip. I'll give you $1,000 for a right answer, and 1000 taken away for each incorrect answer in any that you don't get to. Alright, I'll start you off with 30 seconds on the clock. Let's do it. Dead men don't wear plaid, black and white color. Raging Bull. Dial M for murder. Casablanca. Truth or dare. She's gotta have it. This is it, Manhattan. That's all of them, by wrong. Well, in the industry, we call that pretty bad. Let's survey the damage. Hey, maybe you'll start guessing better on the next question. Category, please. The following question has been rated 17. No questions under 17 permitted. Say hello to a real cut up. You give me a right answer, I give you a quick 4,000. Okay, take a good look at this and tell me. What movie character most likely painted this picture? Laura Baxter from Don't Look Now, Grace from Dead Again, Marnie Edgar from Marnie, or Laura from The Eyes of Laura Mars? Whoa! Oh, that was nice. <laughs> Bet you wish you'd pick this. In Dead Again, Grace is obsessed with scissors and does lots of freaky scissor art. I like the movie okay, except that she does all her stuff with righty scissors, and I'm a lefty. Okay, pick a category. What do we got out there? It looks like... It looks like 18, sir. And I believe this one's called The Running of the Has-Beens. Better wake up, there's 6,000 bucks at stake. Get your finger out of your ear and listen up. We're going. If you were racing in the original 1981 Cannonball Run, which of these could you not do? Run over Mickey Rooney, flip off Jamie Farr, cut off Burt Conby, or blindside Terry Bradshaw? Mickey Rooney was not in Cannonball Run. 
Mr. Rooney doesn't go for those lowbrow flicks. He prefers more cerebral films, like How to Stuff a Wild Bikini. All right, hit me. Now showing Toy Story. Been there, done that. Oh, let's just make this one $6,000. You know, usually they make a movie and then come out with dolls and action figures for the kids. But sometimes some genius film exec decides to do it the other way around. Which of these children's toy movies does not exist? The Care Bears movie, the Cabbage Patch Kids movie, My Little Pony the movie, or G.I. Joe the movie? I'm afraid we'll have to garnish your wages. Let's see what a correct answer looks like. There is no Cabbage Patch Kids movie. Besides, if they made one, you'd never find a theater that was showing it, and if you did, it would cost like 150 bucks to get in. Okay, I need a category. For your enjoyment, the who, the why, two G's if you get this one right. Remember the deaf, dumb, and blind kid from the Who musical Tommy? Well, who doesn't? If Chris Farley's Tommy Boy were to play the title role in Tommy, how would he best be described? That short, glum, and snide kid, that deaf, smart, and blonde kid, that tall, dark, and gay kid, or that fat, dumb, and rich kid? No, but if you would have spelled deaf D-E-F, then maybe. The correct answer is... Most of the humor in Tommy Boy is derived from Chris Farley's character being a rich, overweight moron. Totally unlike Black Sheep, in which Farley plays a wealthy, obese idiot. Category, please. You think you know the attack, huh? I got news for you. Not all attacks are equal. Here's your clue. Instruments ready? All right, then. Let's make some music. instead of utterly humiliated. Oh, and while I'm adding insult to injury. You don't know, Okay, Jack. good show, everybody. Uh, Raul, could you ask the players what they want to do now? Hey, if you want to play again, just let me know whenever you're ready, okay? Miss Edith Parker knew me as the boy who hated geometry. Hypotenuse, Lance. Ow! Miss Parker tried to teach me cosines, but I was too busy trying to entertain my classmates. <laughs> You'll never get anywhere in life if you don't learn how to compute the volume of a cube, Lance. Ow! Well, I never did get geometry, but I did make over $20 million for my last movie. So if you're listening, Ms. Parker, screw you and screw geometry. Teachers, who needs them? Paid for with extra cash Lance Anderson found under the seat in his Porsche. Hey, Gene, you want to rent a video? I don't know. 
I don't want to see anything that might offend my sensibilities. Not so fast. Have you heard of PC Video? PC, PC Video. Video? That's right. PC Video has over 10,000 classic videos and new releases in stock. Each one custom edited to avoid offending your race, religion, sexual orientation, gender, or personal politics. Wow. Look at all these videos. And not a one that insults me as a vertically challenged Republican mime. Or me, a colorblind herbal therapist from Delaware. But wait. I'm a bisexual defense attorney and a Satanist. Anything for me? You bet. Thanks, PC Video! Come to PC Video tonight. You'll never see anything that challenges you again. Are you between the ages of 10 and 12 and looking for an escort this evening? You're only a call away from some parental guidance to that PG-13 movie you can't get into. And Sadie's Escort Service is your ticket to mild profanity and brief nudity. Aunt Sadie got me into Airheads and Billy Madison. I could have seen them in the video store, but Adam Sandler's movies are meant to be seen on the big screen. Middle school's tough, and Aunt Sadie understands that you can't survive the lunch table without getting all the Ace Ventura talking ass jokes. Hey kids, Aunt Sadie here. Look, if you don't mind me covering your eyes every once in a while, I'll get you into an R-rated movie too. So what are you waiting for? Your 13th birthday? Come on, pick up the phone. Children under 13, don't bother getting permission from your parents before calling. Studio executives, how many times have you heard this trash from directors? The problem, the problem is that you don't get my vision. Are you sick of overpaid pansy-ass actors and their blood-sucking agents? You need Digital Auto Movie. Just type in your own brilliant one-sentence concept, select your marketing demographic, and Digital Auto Movie does the rest. No actors, no writers, no directors, no agents, no problems. Using the latest high-tech artificial intelligence, Digital Auto Movie will never complain about its trailer. It'll never walk off the set. It'll never Never ask for gross points, and best of all, it'll never, never accuse you of not having integrity. Because it doesn't care. You want gratuitous nudity and pointless violence? Baby, you know best. How long have you wanted to tell William Morris CAA and ICM to shove it where the sun don't shine? Well, now you can. Digital Auto Movie for Studio Executives. We take the hassles and the assholes out of making movies.